Hello! Today's lecture is on a stress transformation. So let's dig in. All right, so when we talk about stress transformations, we're really talking about how we're describing something within a coordinate system. And like any physical quantity, like a force or a velocity vector, um, that exists outside of that coordinate system. Uh, so if we look at these three diagrams over here, this force F, okay, which should be, could be a stress vector or a velocity vector, exists in this space, and this, this is the same as that F as the same as that F. Uh, the fact that these coordinate systems are different doesn't change the physical uh, notion of that force. Uh, but the description of that force F changes in each of these systems. So in this system here, our you know, normal uh, horizontal vertical coordinate system, uh, we might say that F is equal to 2i plus 5j, right? Two units in the x direction, five units in the y direction. If we put it in this rotated coordinate system, and this coordinate system is rotated at sort of a, a random uh, number of degrees here. We could describe this as well when we could say, well, now it's moving in 4.4 in the x prime direction uh, and 3.1 in the y prime direction. Still the same vector, but described in a different way. And finally, and this is where things start to get more useful for us, we could describe it in a coordinate system that we uh, tailored to that force and made this completely in the x direction. And then we have a, a simplified version of our vector description that just says, oh, it moves 5.4 in the x double prime direction. This uh, process of changing our coordinate system in order to get a different description of our physical quantity is called a vector transformation. Okay, so now we're going to apply that idea of vector transformation uh, to the state of stress, which, like force, is a directional uh, quantity. Uh, stress, however, is a tensor uh, rather than a vector because it's defined by two directions. So if we look at, say, our shear stress here, um, it's both defined by both the face, in this case z, and by the direction of the shear stress, x or y, okay? But it's still a directional physical quantity, and so we can do the same sort of vector transformation, or really technically a tensor transformation on that state of stress. Now, why do we want to do that? We want to do that because this is going to allow us to find a maximum uh, stress um, for a given uh, point within an object. Uh, in our 3D problem, we have six independent stresses, and we can see those up here. Um, that's one, two, three normal ones, and then three shear ones, because you've got to remember that like this guy and this guy are actually equal. Um, when we do plane stress, we, we can simplify that quite a bit, right? And we're going to end up with uh, three different stresses, uh, a shear stress uh, and two normal stresses. Um, and we're going to learn how to transform those, okay, by changing our coordinate system. That state of, just like that vector f on the previous slide was unique uh, and unchanging in those three coordinate systems, a state of stress can be described by two normal stresses and a shear stress. Uh, and when we change that coordinate system, uh, we're not actually going to be changing that physical quantity. We're just going to be changing the way that we describe it. Okay, so now we want to start thinking about how to do this tensor uh, transformation on our state of stress. As I mentioned before, the reason that we want to do this is we want to find a maximum state of stress for uh, a given body. Um, and by learning how to transform uh, the state of stress, we can make sure that we find the maximum, uh, the maximum expression or the maximum description uh, for a particular uh, state of stress. Uh, so we'll rotate uh, our coordinate system by theta. Uh, we'll still be describing that same 
state of stress, those three unique vectors, but we'll try to describe them in a way that makes it clear what the maximum shear stress is and the maximum normal stress. So here's a nice square differential element, uh, and we're going to really quickly look and see how we do these transformations. We want to transform this square element here uh, into this element. In other words, we want to find out what um, uh, sigma x prime is, what sigma y prime is, and what tau x prime y prime is. We know all of these, okay? Anything that doesn't have a prime on it is a known value. So we take a section of the element, basically it's like as if we drew a, a line right here. We're taking this section by cutting this face at the angle theta. And we end up with this triangle down here. Now, this triangle is still at equilibrium, right? There's, it's still not moving. Um, these forces are the same, or the shears, rather, are the same along this surface uh, and this surface. And then we have some unknown stresses along this surface. We're going to imagine a sort of uh, thickness T um, that we're just going to incorporate into delta A. So delta A is our area. We're going to say this area along this guy is called delta A. And that means this one is delta sine theta, this one is delta cosine theta. And you could do the geometry to figure out that. But that's just straightforward trig. And then we draw this free body diagram of our new section. Okay, this is going to be the free body diagram we use basically to find these new values. So what is our normal stress sigma x prime here? Well, if we look at our free body diagram, you can see we know all of these values, right? Anything that's not a prime we know, and we know these values as well. Uh, and if we think about these two, this guy is unknown, but if I want to solve for this, I don't need to know this because they're perpendicular, right? This stress has no effect on this stress uh, because they're perpendicular. And I can figure out what this, if I'm going to solve the equilibrium equation in the x prime direction, I don't need to know that one. And so it's going to be a, a, a function of these known values and these known values. Okay, I'm not going to go through the math here um, to show you that. Um, you can check it out <laughs> later with this guy uh, after he takes his nap here. Uh, but you end up with a relatively compact form. <laughs> it's not a lot of fun here. But you can see that this is just a geometric equation, right? We're just doing a simple statics problem. Uh, finding this as a function of these four different values, okay? Now we could go through that same process uh, and solve for our shear along our new section. And we could also create a new section uh, in order to find uh, sigma y prime. Uh, and we end up with equations to give us three unique vectors to describe the same state of stress uh, with a different coordinate system. And those look like that there. Uh, and we're not going to use those a ton. We'll do a couple problems with them just to, so you can see how they work. Um, but this is the kind of thing. They're messy. Um, it's uh, Generally, we'll put this in some kind of computational form. We'll code this up, uh, and then we can get these transformations relatively quickly. And I just want to stress, uh, again, that what we're doing here is not, we're not creating any kind of new forces, right? This is the same situation. We're just describing it with a new language in the same way that um, this vector here in an XY coordinate system, if I rotated my coordinate system 53 degrees, I'd find that that force was five and X hat, right? Um, it's the same vector. We're just getting a different uh, quantification for it. Um, and that matters more here than it does when we talk about force 
because that's going to change. Um, that might change a force from being compressive to tensile, uh, but it's also going to allow us to find a maximum force or a maximum stress. All right, so let's do a quick problem. So the state of plane stress on a surface of a plane. <laughs> oh, funny. I'm a funny guy. <laughs> um, we want to find out what happens if we take that state of plane stress uh, and we rotate our orientation 30 degrees clockwise, right? So how, how is that going to work out? So there's an image of what we're doing. So we've got this guy and we see that we've got a compressive force in one direction, a tensile force in the other, and a uh, uh, clockwise shear force on the X face, which is how we usually measure that, right? So it's counterclockwise over here, but it's clockwise on the pos in the positive X direction. And so th there are some sign conventions to get used to here. Normal stress, as always, is going to be a positive uh, when it's expansive. Shear we measure on the X positive face or the X prime positive face, uh, depending uh, which system we're talking about. And then theta is generally going to be positive when it's counterclockwise. So it's going to go uh, if our rotation is in that direction. So here we have a uh, negative 80 megapascal sigma x, right, because that's compressive, positive 50 megapascal um, uh, sigma y, and then our shear force here is going to be negative because it's clockwise on the x face, and our rotation is going to be negative because it's in the clockwise direction. So we got to make sure that we get our signs right, or we're going to we're going to get uh, incorrect solutions. Now, um, once we get those signs taken care of, it's all just a matter of throwing things into our equations here. So we'll do that x uh, prime here. Um, nothing tricky about this. Uh, make sure you're doing 2 theta here rather than 2 cosine theta. Um, everything's pretty straightforward there and we get our x sigma x prime value to be negative 25.8. Uh, and that means that that force is compressive, right? So if we look down here in the x prime direction, which is now moving in this direction, we have a compressive force um, our sigma y is also compressive. So notice we had a large compressive force here uh, and a relatively large tensile force here. In the end, we have much less uh, in terms of normal forces, right? Our normal force is negative uh, 25 here and negative 4 here, practic practically zero in that direction. Um, and then our shear force uh, is much bigger in this um, in this direction. Now that you know, you might sort of think, why? How can that be, right? How can we have a shear force when we didn't? We'll deal with that in the next lecture. We'll try and understand what, how to think about this a little bit more. Uh, but what, for the time being, we just need to remember that this is representing the same physical condition. It's representing the same state of stress uh, in this new coordinate system. So in the next uh, lecture, we'll, we'll dig into how that makes sense, <laughs> which is tough.